Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Thank you for attending this wonderful celebration that we have, the Google celebration. Okay. In order to get started here, I'd like to call this to order and have our color guard present the national colors. If able, please stand. We will have the invocation by the All Saints Pastor, Father Donald Lester. Let us bow our heads and pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you praise and thanks for all that has gone before us which gives us the right to stand here today and to pray in freedom. We especially thank you for those people of faith who so generously lived out their lives that they were willing to spill their own blood, put their own lives at risk for those of us that they didn't even know. Help us through our participation today to increase that kind of courage in the way that we live so that freedom might be a gift that all persons are given. We pray this in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the national anthem will be sung by Emily Banks. Feel free to join in. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so
the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the SAR pledge, pledge will be done by our very own Doug Knapp from the Nantla Delegate Chamber. With SAR members, please join me in the pledge. We, descendants of the heroes of the American Revolution, who by their sacrifices established the United States of America, reaffirm our faith in the principles of liberty and our constitutional republic, and solemnly pledge ourselves to defend them against every fear. You may be seated, please. I'd like to turn it over to Sherry, Mayor, for introductions. Thank you, Jim. Can you all hear me? My name is Sherry Mayer, and I'd like to welcome everyone to All Saints Parish in honoring Etienne Bernard. This program was a team effort with the Cemetery Board and the Archives Committee, along with Dennis Hahn and Patty DeKerber as guidance. I would like to ask the cemetery boards if they would like to stand or just wave, hold your hand up, that are present. And those that are on the archives committee, could you either stand or hold your arm up, whichever's easier for you. Trish Walters, are you here by chance? All right. She's a historical researcher, and Diane Valentine, who had previously been our administrator, are responsible for the plaque. Stan Elfrick, is he here? Well, he made the base for the plaque to be placed on, so much appreciation. It was a group effort, so for all. As many of you know, Father Don, is our pastor and spiritual leader with Emily Banks as our director of liturgy and music who sang our national anthem. We have the pleasure of having Len Pagano, if you want to just wave, Judy Bateman, Rocky Reitmeyer, is Melissa Reimer here, Joyce Townsend, and Dr. Greg Sartorius. Um, they are our aldermen and older women. And I'm happy to have many, as a, many of Etienne's descendants are able to join us. Will y'all just raise your hand up for me? Oh, wow. <laughs> They're all up front and center. <laughs> and I would also like to acknowledge the many visitors that came today as well. That's much appreciated. As we know, Etienne Bernard not only was a Revolutionary War patriot, but was instrumental in organizing the beginning of our parish and cemetery. Being one of the original founding families of our parish, the first meeting was held in Etienne's home in 1815. Also present was George Gaddy, who has a name, oh, who has a street named after him, and that's the street right down below here. When I read, he was an, a Revolutionary War patriot, but we don't have documentation of that. Maybe someday we'll find it. And there was also a Mr. Denny. He was the only German present at that time. And I believe there was a couple other people present, but I don't know their names. And I think if Etienne were present, he'd probably say, this is one hell of a family reunion. <laughs> and I think he'd be proud of the family and friends that came today. Thank you. I'll give it back to Jim. Thank you, and again, welcome to everyone. It's wonderful to see everyone here, especially the descendants from ATN. Now, as I wanted to do a brief introduction to talk a little bit about the Sons of the American Revolution, but before I get to that, whenever I finish, I hope that all of the relatives here, we have plenty of people in the Daughters of the American Revolution, and the Sons of the American Revolution will be happy to sign you up. So, it would be great to have you part of our chapters. The Sons of the American Revolution is known for being 
a historical society that likes to have a, a living history. As you can see by our wonderful color guard we have here, there's many of us that really enjoy celebrating our patriots. One of the things that we have the pleasure and honor is to keep their, their vision, their life, their duties alive by what we do in the Sons of the American Revolution. ATM was also one of those individuals from the Missouri militia. When I first heard of this whole uh, celebration we're having for ATN, it was really exciting for me because we don't have a lot of great markings from people that are actually patriots that were from the area that we're at, and we're so intertwined with our, ch our chapter. As you know, our chapter is Fernando de Leyva of St. Charles, who happened to be the commander, the Spanish commander of this whole area one of the one of the most major battles that we had near the end of the Revolutionary War was the Battle of Fort San Carlos. And to talk a little bit about the Battle of Fort San Carlos and the importance that it had in the Revolution, it was one of the last battles in the end of the American Revolution in the West. A lot of people don't know that we had such a major battle in St. Louis. Now, whenever it started, uh, there the British had hired 700 to 1,000 Indians to come down the Mississippi with, were led by about eight fur traders. Their job was to take over St. Louis. Now, we were known at that time for being a small city. They thought it would be easy to walk in, take that over. The fur traders promised the Indians that they would be able to manage all the fur going up and down the Mississippi. And the British knew that they could put a choke point on the Patriots. And it's quite possible if we wouldn't have won that war, we wouldn't be, or that battle, we wouldn't be celebrating today. So Fernando de Leyva, when he found out about this attack, he started building a fort, Fort San Carlos, down in downtown St. Louis. Now they were only able to build one pillar at the time, one tower. Now anybody that's interested, at the corner of Fourth and Walnut is the exact location where that tower was built. So. When the Indians were coming down, they, they dropped off about 14 miles north of St. Louis. They thought, again, that it would be an easy battle, but we had plenty of entrenchment around St. Louis as we were preparing. ATN was one of the militiamen and soldiers that were fighting in this battle. Now, uh, Fernando de Leyva was concerned somewhat that he wouldn't have enough soldiers to fight the battle, so he sent a message to his French counterpart in St. Genevieve, which on Memorial Day weekend, St. Genevieve has a very big celebration because the French uh, militia that were very experienced played a very instrument, instrumental role in the Battle of uh, Fort San Carlos. They came up to St. Louis and roughly just over 100 militiamen, in addition with the citizens who were here, repelled the attack. It was an attack that came to St. Louis and Cahokia at the same time. And when we drove back the Indians, then it really it, it isolated the victory for us because the British were not able to control the Mississippi, were not able to come behind us and flank us from the rear, and therefore we were able to hold this ground. So ATN showed extreme, it, it was an extreme bravery to go against such odds, because think about it, you have a hundred soldiers against a thousand Indians, but we were able to repel them because of our strength and, and what we had done. So for all of you descendants, he played a very important part to this battle. And we are here to honor him and the other patriots that secured the victory at Fort San Carlos. So thank you for being here and honoring him with us. One of the, and so in, this, in the Sons of the American Revolution, this is one example of what we enjoy because every one of these gentlemen that are here in fact uh, all the folks that are in the dar and sar could you please raise your hand so we have everyone in here has a very unique story with their patriot like atn that is just as beautiful as what he did in the war and just as important because everyone did their part throughout from the coast all the way through so we're very proud to be here to honor ATN and also his job and the things that he did in the Missouri militia. Now with the Sons of the American Revolution, we have some very important dignitaries here that we would like, that I would like to announce. We have a past national 
uh, SAR Society Vice President General and past Missouri SAR President Steve Baldwin. If you could raise your hand. And when I announce you, if you could just please raise your hand or stand up. Charles Lilly is a past Missouri president for the SAR. And he's over there. Our very own Dennis Hahn, who, is, who has been just phenomenal in this effort to go forward and recognize what ATN did and his relatives that are here. And he's also a past uh, SAR Society Missouri president. And Dennis definitely deserves a big round of applause for his passion for the SAR. We have a couple of our state society members here. We have Dan Evans, who's the state secretary, and he's our chapter secretary, and in the color guard. And we have John Bedell, Bedell, who's the treasurer and the president of the our counter, the Spirit of St. Louis chapter that's on the other side of St. Louis area. And just so you know, if you're thinking about joining, Fernando the label's better. <laughs> So we're proud to have, and then we have also one of the aldermen, Dr. Greg Santoris. He's here in uniform, which I appreciate. So we want to thank everyone that has shown up today, especially the descendants to celebrate this time. And with that, I'll turn it back. I will be introducing Dr. Gail Ray. Did I pronounce your name right? Good afternoon. I am Dr. Gail Ray, Regent of St. Charles Chapter, Daughter of the American Revolution. St. Charles uh, DAR Chapter was established in 1909, 86 years after the founding of All Saints. We began with 14 members, and today I bring you greetings from 177 daughters. I would like to thank All Saints Founding Committee, Fernanda DeLeva, SAR, and the descendants of Patriot Bernard for inviting us to participate in this celebration. By marking Patriot Bernard's grave, we remember the founding of this great country almost 250 years ago. We wish All Saints the most wonderful year of celebration and congratulate the descendants of Patriot Bernard for having his grave marked. Thank you, Gail. And now we would like to have some words from our St. Peter Mayor. Ben. And thank you for being here. No, I wasn't in the war. <laughs> uh, folks, as the mayor and the Board of Aldermen that's all here, I have to say we're very proud of this day and this um, event here and to see how many descendants are here that's amazing it's almost a city here <laughs> so i'm very impressed with that and then I, I was trying to do my math there and this young man here had died in 1831 and i'm thinking way back then it's almost 200 years ago and when you think about this land, everything. Can, uh, I'm sorry, can everyone hear me now? Okay. But anyway, uh, the city of St. Peter's takes history very serious. Um, presently, I have Alderman uh, Townsend, that she's more or less going to help me out and be the historian of uh, St. Peter's and the, the boundary lines. And this is going to be one of the things that will be logged into the uh, history of St. Peter's. I've been here in office almost 40 years and I never knew this existed. So this is quite an honor for the city. And, I, uh, and, and also to see the attendance here says a lot. It says a lot about the church. Says a lot about the uh, SAR, DAR, and a, a military presence behind me. 
I salute them all. Um, I really uh, don't think I should be talking too much longer because they'll have a hook on me. So, but anyway, I salute to each and every one of you, and uh, God bless you. This is amazing. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, one of the things um, I haven't seen him, I know we got Michael Roberts. Are you here? I don't think so. All right, I would like to call Sherry Hoskins. Michael, okay, closer? Sorry, thank you. <laughs> I'd like to call uh, Sherry Hoskins and President Joey Hoskins, Josie Hoskins, to have a word. It's the senior president and the president of the Children's of the American Revolution Society of Nathan Fertel. Greetings from <laughs> Greetings from the Nathan Fertel Society. We want to thank thank you for all for coming. <laughs> And uh, if you want any information about uh, children of American Revolution, please see us after. Thank you. Thank you. One uh, quick note before we move into the next part of our program. If you're not aware, at the St. Charles Museum, there is a fantastic display on the American Revolution in the West that was done by Stephen Kling and Kathy Nadu. And uh, it is definitely worth seeing because they did a phenomenal job pointing out everything that happened during the Battle of Fort San Carlos, in addition to some of the other events that took place uh, around that time with uh, the Battle of the Revolutionary War in the West. So now, without further ado, I would like to turn this over for the life of ATN to Patty Dickerber, who's done a fantastic job with all of her research. And this is a great showing. Um, we've had grave markings all over St. Charles County and Lincoln County, and, um, and um, this is the biggest crowd we've ever had. So thank you all for attending. Um, and where do I start with Etienne? Um, like most Frenchmen, he came to the Midwest. He was born in Quebec, Canada. He was the son of Jean-Baptiste Bernard and Genevieve Duga, who may have come to St. Louis through Fort Vincennes. He was born about 1755 during the French and Indian Wars. As many of the young men of his time, he learned the fur trapper and hunter business, which was very lucrative for able-bodied men. He traveled the rivers and forests and at different times was in Fort Vincennes, Cahokia, and by 1782, he was in St. Louis. Many of these trappers traveled the Mississippi and the Missouri rivers between trading posts which in our area were Cahokia, Kaskaskia, Fort St. Uh, Fort de Chart, St. Charles, Fort de Sioux, St. Genevieve, and of course St. Louis. The trappers lived off the lands and the rivers. Most didn't have a fixed place of abode. Many had Indian wives and wintered in the Indian villages, or they lived in the trading post occasionally. The Spanish controlled the fort at St. Louis, and it was called Fort San Carlos, and Jim told you about that. The Spanish were sympathetic to our cause, and after George Rogers Clark and his men visited the fort, the Commandant, Fernando de Leyva, gave his full support for George and his men. He supplied funds for clothing, weapons, food, etc., for the troops, and when he received word that the fort was going to be attacked, he rallied the nearby trappers, rowers, traders, and friendly Indians to help build a secure entrenchment and tower fort. 
The encounter at the fort was in May of 1780, and it was called the Battle of Fort San Carlos. The fort had to be on alert and always defended before and after this battle, because you never knew when the English or the Indians would attack again. If you were at the fort and a man of age, you were required to join the militia. And Etienne was among the militia from December 1782 through February 1783 with many of his trapper friends. After serving his military term in the militia, Etienne married Marguerite Lebeau in Cahokia's Holy Family Church on August 1st, 1786. He and Marguerite moved to a residence in St. Louis and he continued in his profession. He had at least three children by Marguerite and two of them were Marie Louise and Agatha. They were baptized in the old cathedral, which was known then as St. Louis King of France Church. It seems that many of the Frenchmen that served in the militia followed Louis Blanchette back up to St. Charles as he started settling the town he had founded many years before. By 1791, he was in St. Charles with many of his friends, and the census was taken there and he shows up. Son Jean Baptiste was born in 1792 in St. Charles and was baptized at St. Charles Borromeo Catholic Church. Borromeo was the church attended by all the French families in St. Charles. Marguerite died probably in early April, 1794. He then married Marie-Louise Langbon de Baquet on May 6, 1794. Children Marie Dauphine, Marie-Louise, Etienne, Hippolyte, and Joseph were born between 1795 and 1800. Little Etienne, though, died when he was only seven months old. In 1796, he received a land-grant survey in St. Charles from Antoine Soulard, which shows his neighbors as Antoine Janus and Lauren Duroche. On January 8th of 1800, he signed a deed of property in St. Charles. Then children Isidore, Marguerite and Charles were born. In 1804, he's listed as an inhabitant of St. Charles in the census and paid for surveying of some property. In August of 1804, daughter Marie Delphine died. She was only nine years old and she's buried in Borromeo Cemetery. Two more daughters were born, Agatha Arcage and Arcage by 1810. Another daughter was born in 1814, but she was baptized in St. Louis at the King of France Catholic Church, probably because his wife's parents lived in St. Louis. He was involved in several circuit court cases in St. Charles. Either he was being sued or he was suing someone else. They were interesting. Um, in August of 1815, he donated land to All Saints Catholic Church. He was about 60 years old at the time. He died when he was about 80 years old, and his will was probated in St. Charles on May 2nd, 1835. His final resting place is here, long forgotten until Earth a few years ago by Trish Walther. In doing my research for Etienne and all the St. Louis militiamen, I used books on the Revolutionary War in the West and the militia list found in Spanish archives at Madrid just recently. Information was also found in records of the St. Louis Archdiocese, St. Charles County Historical Society, St. Louis Genealogical Society, and some early histories of St. Louis and St. Charles. I especially want to thank the DA daughters 
Diane Valentine and Greg Walker, Trish Walter, for never giving up on locating his gravesite and contacting me about it. Thanks also to SAR extraordinaire, Dennis Hahn, and the Fernando de Leyva SAR chapter for marking the grave and making this ceremony possible. We all feel that it's an honor to mark his grave and educate people about his service in the Revolutionary War and the great legacy of service he and his family left behind. Let us never forget the sacrifices. If you want more information on the Battle of Fort San Carlos, visit the Heritage Museum in St. Peter's to see the Revolutionary War in the West exhibit. It's really a great exhibit and explains the battle and the participants of that battle. Also, you can Google Battle of Fort San Carlos and Revolutionary War in the West. Thank you all for being here and allowing me to tell you a little bit about him. Um, I've really enjoyed researching him and looking for his grave. So, thanks. Thank you, Patty. All right, um, I would like to call forward Mary, or Diane Valentine, Trish Walker, and Gail Ray, Sherry Mayer, and Father Don Wester, please, for the dedication of the SAR grave marking and unveiling. It's beautiful. Please, after the ceremony is over, please come down and see this. It is definitely an excellent job. And Gail, you would like to dedicate the wreath? With that, we would like to have the musket salute to ATN by our color guard. Please rise and respect for ATN and his duty to our country in this area.
You may be seated, please. If we could, let's give a round of applause for our color guard. For descendants of ATM, one of the things to keep in mind if you think about the challenges that you had in battle, an expert marksman could fire three volleys a minute. So that was considered one of the fastest uh, folks out there that could shoot. So they had quite a challenge ahead of them. All right, before we uh, close our ceremony, if I may call doctor. <laughs> a couple of things very quickly. Uh, down, I had mentioned St. Genevieve on May 27th and 28th, which is a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the French militia for their contribution and what they did in Battle of Fort San Carlos, uh, the city of Gen uh, St. Genevieve has a wonderful celebration. If you can make it down there, it is well worth it to see. Uh, we'll be down there. The color guard and I will be down there for another grave marking. So uh, feel free to come down there. It's a great celebration. And on Memorial Day, just remember that, that we celebrate all those that went and paid the ultimate price for us. And then finally, in October, we're going to have another uh, a um, conference that's going to have several speakers that are going to talk about the American Revolution in the West, and there'll be some information on that in the uh, whenever we have the uh, get-together here shortly. So to close this, we'll do the recessional. Yes, sir. This is what the SAR does to close each of their meetings. And so until we meet again, let us remember our obligations to our forefathers who gave us our Constitution, Bill of Rights, an independent Supreme Court, and a nation of free men. Thank you, Doctor. And the benediction will be done by our chapter, Chaplain James Keithley. Our Heavenly Father, as we part from one another, may this marker remind all who pass of the sacrifices Mr. Bernard and his fellow patriots freely gave to the cause of liberty to establish our great nation. May each of us be ever vigilant to keep that fire of freedom burning, to serve our community, our state, our nation, and each other. Teach us to think wisely and act with courage. We pray that you continue to watch over the United States of America and guide our nation as you have in the past. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Color Guard, please retire the national colors. Please stand. As this concludes our celebration, again, we thank you all for attending. There will be a reception up in the All Saints uh, reception hall, and that is, of course, after you have a chance to look at this beautiful plaque for ATM. Thank you again for attending.